So the next logical thing would be to use adjuvant chemotherapy and uh, see how it goes. Do we have real robust evidence as of now for that? Uh, this, most of these trials has also been discussed in the previous talk, that is GOG34. Again, they did not have enough recruitment and there was no difference in OS or PFS. The Italian study, again, slightly heterogeneous, but uh, the chemotherapy also was a cap sort of regimen. They compared with pelvic EBRP, again, no difference in overall survival or PFS. The URTC 55991, although a lot of uh, mm, uh, caveats are there because there was a group, a heterogeneous group as mentioned and there is, uh, this was compared adjuvant EBRT with chemotherapy. Again, there was a lot of regimens which was allowed and 27% didn't complete chemotherapy. But then what we learned is there is definitely increase in PFS and increase in overall survival, which we could not demonstrate with uh, any of the RT trials. Um, we all think adjuvant chemotherapy, as I told, is sort of standard in high-risk disease, but there is really no robust evidence as of now to do that. And most of our uh, uh, decisions are based on this retrospective study, which shows that there is a um, uh, reduction in risk of uh, recurrence and increase in PFS and OS. But what I was interested much was this 70% of the recurrences you see that is extra pelvic and not salvageable in the observation arm. So what we can see is if you have a recurrence beyond the pelvis and most of them in the high risk arm will have a recurrence beyond the pelvis, they may not be salvageable and they may die due to endometrial cancer. So there definitely chemotherapy might have a role if you study in a more prospective and robust way. So if you have a chemotherapy versus no chemotherapy in that series, actually there was definitely improvement of addition of chemotherapy and that was either with observation or RT, if you compare the addition of chemotherapy, there was an advantage. So that's why uh, whether the sandwiching of chemoradiotherapy with concurrent cisplatin and adjuvant carboplatin AUC5 and paclitaxel, is it good enough? We have a paper which says that paclitaxel carboplatin can be sort of replaced by the CAP, uh, can be the regimen to uh, follow and most of us do that compared to CAP sort of regimen which was used in many of the previous trials. So uh, the, uh, if you look at the GOG trial, it showed that the adjuvant chemotherapy, if you give uh, it can have some improvement in PFS and OS, whereas the other trials did not. Again, we have uh, a lot of uh, um, sort of uh, uh, the, uh, intuition that, you know, if you use in serous and clear cell carcinoma and in a high risk subset, they become high risk and definitely there is advantage. But actually that could not be proven in the, uh, in the uh, GOG 122 OS analysis mainly because maybe the numbers are poor and slow, uh, small and uh, may, may not have really, but most of us do use serous and clear cell uh, irrespective of the stage of the disease. So this is one trial GOG249 also was discussed in the previous uh, uh, speaker. That is whether uh, you randomize either to give pelvic radiotherapy versus vaginal cuff brachytherapy plus three cycles of chemotherapy. Um, I'm not sure why they could uh, stop at three cycles of chemotherapy, maybe uh, more cycles would actually would have benefited from a medical oncologist point of view. Uh, so there was a non-inferiority uh, discussed in the initial arm. So I would again look at it from let's say in a testicular uh, cancer point of view where you look at 20 years, 25 years data, we have from the uh, POTAC and other uh, long-term analysis that you are going to get long-term toxicity and secondary cancer with um, if you add EBRT. So if you are able to avoid EBRT and Pakli Carbo can be uh, added to a vaginal brachytherapy and you are getting the same survival, maybe that might be the way to go uh, and uh, maybe avoid EBRT in at least some of the patients. This trial actually will might tell us uh, how to go uh, forward and might answer many of the questions where we have a reasonably good stratification where they are going to very simple randomization to Carbo Pakli into six cycles plus brachytherapy versus observation after brachytherapy and the uh, number they are planning to enroll is 678. Till then, what are we going to do? Well, the, uh, if you look at the very conservative guidelines, the NCI PDQ guidelines, they also say that even in stage 1 and stage 2 endometrial cancer, although it's an institutional case series, I utilize a, a policy of adjuvant Pakli Carbo, occasionally including radiotherapy for this histological subtype. And they say that the GOG group trial is comparing this compar chemotherapy compar regimen to pelvic radiation. So chemotherapy is right up there in the high risk and to an extent coming up even in the 
high risk intermediate and other intermediate group. So let me conclude rather diplomatically saying that there is no improvement at survival as of now we have demonstrated by adjuvant radiotherapy but actually it is very important for us to incorporate in the right subset of our patients because it has conclusively shown that uh, radiotherapy improves local control. Whether we should use vaginal brachytherapy or external brachytherapy in the subsets uh, needs to be seen. Improvement in survival from adjuvant chemo radiotherapy may be due to the chemo alone because many of the trials with radiotherapy could not demonstrate a survival benefit. Trials are ongoing to establish the role of adjuvant chemotherapy in all subsets and that might actually will tell us how to go forward. Adjuvant chemotherapy according to my perception may coexist along with RT rather than replace it and the role of each modality in each subset hopefully will become more clear and defined in the near future. Thank you.